flesh and thin side. Rice with rice. That's it. Rice with rice. That's it. Always will come. Always will come. Shut up. Rice with rice. Rice with rice. Ispe mada da kaska sada da da da. Rabana sose tere 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 rabana sata da 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 rove tere 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 tere. Come with your Holy Spirit. Come with your Holy Spirit. Fill me up. Fill me up. Kaska sada da 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 kaska sada da 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 kaska sada da da. And just words start coming. Sir, kare kare words, kare 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 words, kare kare words, kare kare words. Thank you, Lord. What I do? What? What do you? What you are doing? You are praying in tongues. Thing in TV. Sometimes I do not believe it, but today I do believe because it happens to me. Go now, and you have to do this. Oh, Johnny! It's good, yeah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We as a church today stand in front of a new reformation. A reformation where we are coming back to what we read in the book of Acts. If you look at the church today, it's so different from what we read in the book of Acts. Because we have like 2,000 years of history where the church has been changed again and again. We can see that the church in the book of Acts was a living body. It was a body of believers who was led by the Holy Spirit. The church was a movement, a disciple movement. If you take a body and make a business out of a body, is that not prostitution? And this is what we have done today with the church. We have prostituted the church of Christ, the body of Christ. And because of that, we need to see a reformation where we go so much steeper, where we are talking about the doctrine, we are talking about the spirit, and we are also talking about the whole system, the church system, why we do church the way we do it. It's time to go back to what we read in the Book of Acts. God we serve 
What a mighty God we serve Angels bow down Heaven and earth adore Him What a mighty God we serve What a mighty God we serve Angels bow down Heaven and earth Adore Him What makes the book of Acts the most unique book of the Bible is that the book of Acts is the only book in the entire Bible and all of Scripture that shows us how to actually go out and make disciples. If you read the Gospels that lead up to the book of Acts, what's interesting is that even though these books were written at a time, like during when they were written, we were probably about 30 years after the cross, but the time period covered are all before the cross. So we don't see the fullness of the Christian life there because Christ hadn't yet died, He hadn't yet been buried and, and resurrected and sent His Spirit. So we don't see in the Gospels how they went out and actually made disciples. The Holy Spirit had not yet been given. And plus, we didn't have the power yet to go out and be successful doing this. And I think that contributes to a lot of the fear today for those who don't know the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus told them to go and wait. He says, when, you, when my Spirit comes, you will receive power. And then you will be my witnesses. It's real. It's really real. It's really real, y'all. Look at that, she's walking. I know in many churches there is a sign in this church wall where it's written Jesus the same yesterday, today and forever. We today as believers believe that Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. But if He's the same, the Holy Spirit is also the same. And if the Holy Spirit is the same, what we read in the book of Acts should also be the same. This man is just kind of this way to Oh, I feel overwhelmed. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's finished. It is finished. Was his crown? I was walking like this okay. because I couldn't move any faster. What you can do now? <laughs> <laughs> Sister, do like this. I couldn't do this. This I couldn't do. And this I couldn't do. I would have screamed out the old place doing that. Oh, glory be to his name. In the book of Acts, we see the very early Christians, the very early disciples of Christ. They were living this lifestyle of discipleship. They were reaching people in their homes, on the streets. They met people where they were at. And the gospel was exploding and it was spreading to the entire world. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people came to faith in Jesus Christ and was baptized and received the Holy Spirit. But at one point in church history, we see that Christianity was institutionalized and soon after it became a state religion. This hierarchy, this institutionalized church was following us all the way to the Reformation where Luther came, Calvin came, Swingley came. They were trying to reform, they were trying to bring us back to the real gospel, back to the book of Acts. But they failed. We still had the building, 
We still had the special priesthood. We still have people meeting in special buildings on special dates with a hierarchy and people trying to bring offerings to the church so they could gain the favor of God. Luther did not succeed in bringing the church back to what we read in the book of Acts. The Bible is the book of life and it doesn't become the book of life by studying it. It becomes the book of life by living it. Command the plane and the stand to go, in Jesus' name. Try to do it again. What did he do? It's gone. What's this? In Jesus' name, right now, Amen. Check it. Yeah, it's gone. Huh? You felt that it's gone. Amen. Go right now in the name of Jesus, try again. I command you to mend right now in Jesus' name. You can try that. You know that? <laughs> it's similar to Reiki? No. It's not. Jesus. Oh, yeah? Jesus. Not Reiki. No. No Reiki. No. no energy. God. No, no, it's not okay. energy. No. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> What do you think about that? What just happened? It's pretty cool. <laughs> we are born, put here on earth with a purpose. That is to seek and find God. The problem is that we don't seek him, and because we don't seek him, we don't find him. Have you heard about Jesus? Yes, yeah. Christus. We live 2050 after Jesus Christ. God is real, and, and he called us to be his disciples, he called us to be Jesus' disciples, to go out and show the world that he's real. 5th of April 1995, I repented. I recognized I've sinned and gave my life to Jesus. And a light came into my body and I fall to the floor and I met God. The Bible says that when you become a born again Christian, the, the Spirit of God actually comes and lives in you and you get to do the things that Jesus did. The Bible says that we should be doers of the word and not only hearers. If we only hear the word and do not do it, we are deceiving ourselves. We are like a man looking in a mirror, but as soon as we go away, we have forgotten what we saw. Sunday after Sunday, there are millions of Christians who are sitting in church and listening to the Word of God. But as soon as they go away, they have forgotten what they heard. Ja, wat heb ik nog meer? Ik heb spierziekte. Nou, dan gaan we voor bidden. Maar waar zit het? Ja, het hele lichaam. Nou, toen gingen ze dus voor me bidden. Er waren vier, vijf mensen of zo die voor me gingen bidden. Toen voelde ik iets kraken in mijn rug. Toen kon ik dus staan en lopen. Nou, ik wacht, dokter komt, ik zit. Hij zit helemaal in de ekkelboom, alles goed. Ik zeg prima, wat hoor ik? Dus ik ga staan. Hij zegt, wat is er gebeurd? Ze zegt, moet je niet aan mij vragen. Ze zegt, moet je aan God boven vragen. Hij zegt, nou, ik mag je feliciteren. Hij zegt, ik hoop dat het goed blijft gaan. Tot nu toe, het is nu uh, oktober. En 8 juni is dit gebeurd. Dus het is vier maanden waarschijnlijk. Die, die, ja, is het? ja, vier maanden geleden. Ja, het gaat hartstikke goed. Ja. 
As a pastor, in the last couple of years, I've been starting to get really hungry. I'd, I'd read through the book of Acts, and I became angry at the, the way that I saw things happen in the book of Acts, and yet I didn't see those happening in my church or in my own life. Or, or with the eldership or the structure of the church at all. Um, we weren't just going out and healing people. Like we'd lay hands on people and tell them to go home and you know they'll get better maybe in the future or maybe not. Um, but what I read in the book of Acts is that the, the apostles were going out and they were just doing this stuff daily. And uh, I really felt that that's what I wanted. So for two years I've been hungry for this stuff, um, believing that this is what I was called to do, but I hadn't really been able to do it. The church system has to change. We have to stop being a building focused, Sunday service attending uh, institution. People are sitting in churches year after year waiting, waiting for that special minister to come and pray for them and saying, now you have the anointing, you can go out and you can do this or that for God. Or they're just sitting there um, hoping that someone will see them, see their talents. And that is not what we see the Bible telling us to do. That is not what we see Jesus telling us to do. In 95, I was working as a beggar. And I didn't know anything about God. I didn't know anything about the Bible. I was as a young boy in Denmark, baptized in the Lutheran Church. I was confirmed in the Lutheran Church when I was 14. But it was tradition. It's tradition for many people today. One night I look up in the air and say, come on, God, are you there? If you're there, come and take me. I, I want to know you. And short time after, I heard the gospel. And the 5th of April, 1995, 9.30 in the evening, I repented and I gave everything to Jesus. But then I started to come in a church and I started to become like the people in the church. And I thought it was Christianity to meet God and then come to a church and sit there every Sunday. But I got more and more frustrated because I'm like, come on, there must be more than just go to a church and sit there two hours every Sunday and listen to somebody preaching. And at one time I started to just read the Book of Acts, read about the first Christians, how they were living. And, and they didn't do the same I was doing. They saw how life got changed where they came. And at that time I was so frustrated because I've been a Christian like many years. But I've never healed a sick, I've never cast out a demon, I've never led anybody to Christ. I've never experienced the life we read about in the first church, in the Book of Acts. So one day in frustration, I'm like, God, I give you everything. I want to see this life. And then I started to see this life more and more and more. But the problem was, in the beginning, there was nobody who could disciple me. There was nobody like Jesus did when Jesus said, come and follow me and I will make you fishers of man. Come and follow me, I will show you how to heal the sick, how to preach the gospel. I will show you, train you in how you can be effective in the kingdom of God. Nobody did that. But what is different now is that now we are starting to disciple people. And if we take what we have learned and give it to the next generation of disciples and they continue from there and then take that and give it to the next generation of disciples. In very short time, we will have disciples walking around on earth looking exactly like Jesus. Doing the same thing Jesus did, yet even greater things because he went to the Father. I've prepared best for you. Yes, I have prepared a place of rest. I prepared the best for you. Yes, I have prepared a place of rest. And in that place, Life in abundance in that promised land. Now we This is a friend of ours. We see him in old dog. In Swedish. Swedish. 
I became a Christian about um, 11 years ago and I came into the Swedish state church uh, from a totally non-Christian background and after a while me and my wife uh, we moved to, to uh, another city and, and uh, we came into the, a very big church there and we became leaders in a, a big big um, uh, outreach work there in the church. We were leaders there and we were supposed to like uh, be an example there also, but I have never led anybody to Christ. I have ne never baptized anybody myself. I have never seen anybody with my own eyes or prayed for anybody that got healed. I came to a point when, when um, uh, it was one, one night we were out and there, there came a man to my table actually and he and he asked, yeah, uh, I see what you're doing. I, actually, I want to become a Christian. How, how do I do it? And my reaction was, okay, I pick you up tomorrow and I bring you to church. So I did that and I bro brought him to church and I brought him to the pastor. And the pastor led him to salvation. Uh, but that made me react and I understood that something is wrong here. Because I read the Bible a lot, you know, I went to Bible school for a couple of years. I know what the Bible said, but and I was the one who's supposed to do these things, you know. I was the one that's supposed to, be, to he, uh, lay hands on the sick and go to recover. I was the one who's supposed to be out there baptizing people. And, and, and I didn't do it, so something was wrong. Uh, I started to think maybe they're lying. Maybe it's not true what people are telling me. Uh, so I started to, to uh, go out every morning I woke up and just pray to the Lord. And it was raining sometimes, you know, it was bad weather, and my eyes went out because I, I was really, really crying out to the Lord. I want to know you, I want to have what, I want to have the real life. And, uh, and one day when, when I was at work, um, uh, I was reading a Christian newspaper, and there was like a, a small note there about a Danish man who was in a shopping mall in Sweden, praying for sick people and they got healed. And I was like, what? And I, I saw this kind of articles before, but this just took my heart. And I felt that this is God. So I called him and, and he answered and he was like, it was a normal man like me. And we spoke and I told him about my, my journey and he, he thought this is amazing, you know, and, and we should meet. So I gathered a couple of friends and we went down to him in, in Denmark. And then he asked us, why did you come to Denmark? And we said, yeah, we, we want to see people get healed. And then he said like, okay, in about 15 minutes you're going to see the first person get healed. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I could not, uh, I could not believe this. It was, it's, uh, how can this be a part of my life? And, but we went out to the streets and we came to a gang of people, like uh, in the, maybe 25, 30 years old. This, one of the girls there had, had a, had a prob problem with her knee for many years. And he told me to lay my hands on her knee and just command the pain to go away. And I, I almost blacked out and I was so nervous so, 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 and I had no faith either I think. I said, I said okay I do it. So I did it and she was like jumped up. What? And she got healed and, and, and oh, the whole crowd was like there was, this, uh, this rocked my world. I, was, I just realized this is true, this is true. And this actually was enough for me. Uh, I, I prayed for one person then I went by myself. We as Christians are called to make disciples. Another word we have started using is the word kickstart. It's like if you have a motorbike and you want to start the engine, you kickstart it. And when that motorbike is started, you can drive all over the place. In the same way, we as Christians need to get kickstarted in doing the things Jesus has called us to. When we, for example, kickstart a Christian in healing the sick, we take them out on the street say come and follow us and then we show them how to do it and when they have done it one time they can do it again you say you have the pain all over your body most in your legs yeah and we pray for it you're going to see it command all pain to just leave right now be healed right now in the whole body the command all pain to just leave the body right now the whole body right now is pray for healing right now in the name of jesus amen and yes move try to move it the legs nothing, but it feels. 
felt good. It felt good? Yeah, but do you, do you feel the pain now? <laughs> it's gone, yeah. <laughs> People get surprised. This command is back to be totally restored right now. Bend over like this, if I feel. Now again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm not making up. You can feel it. Just it went away. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> this is growing all over the world. The last years we have seen hundreds of thousands of people getting healed by normal believers who get kickstarted and start to go out and heal the sick. And those people now start to lead other people to Christ. So the last years we have seen thousands of people coming to Christ and this is really powerful. I came to, to Stockholm and, and met uh, this brother, you know, and he was there with, uh, with, uh, with a bunch of guys too, and his wife was there too, you know. And there we went out, you know. He first stopped this person who had pain and he just placed his hand on this person and, and this person got healed, you know. And I was just like, whoa, <laughs> this is just like amazing, you know. This person got healed and, and I was like, now it's not in YouTube anymore. I'm not watching this on YouTube, but now just like I'm seeing it in front of me. It was just like amazing, you know, just like seeing the reaction of this person, you know, getting healed. And the next thing that happened was that uh, this this lady came and she was having pain in her stomach, you know. And and this uh, man that was kickstarting me was just like, now it's your time to pray. He said, you're going to place your hand and just command the pain to go. He said, as I just placed my hand in, I was hesitating, man, placed my hand and just like commanded, just like, in Jesus' name, pain go. And I just removed my hand and and suddenly, you know, you should have seen the face of this woman. She was like, how did you do that? Whoa, I've never been in such a thing before. You know, my dream just like came true just right then you know so this is actually the, the best day of my life you know just like being part of what i've been longing for for such a long time you know so on my way back home you know because i was so filled up with joy you know so i was sitting in the bus until like going home and when i just arrived you know uh, i could not just like like sit or just like go home I, I just went around in the city, you know, downtown, and I was praying for people the very same day, you know, and I came across these girls that I prayed for and they got healed instantly as well. I was like, wow, so this is not just like something that happened in Stockholm and just stayed there, so it continues, you know. You know, ever since then, I was just like going out every day, you know, every day I was out to the street and I've seen thousands of people getting healed. I mean, it just like, it just changed me. It has just like changed the entire me, you know. It's Wow. Rob Bennett. Do you know? Do you know? No. Do you Do you I was not expecting what we saw, I kind of was. I was like, no, this is supposed to happen. I've seen it happen. Uh, in videos all the time, but I'd never been able to do it myself. And, and I fully expected that, oh, this is what God does. This is what he uses me for. This is my purpose here. Um, and Come we stay. prayed for uh, one girl um, who uh, had some issues with the back. I think she had some kind of surgery or something. Pain, go right now. Back, go in place right now. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Okay. I don't know if you feel something happen. Oh, Whoa, something happen. She got filled with the Holy Spirit and, and God met her in a radical way and she was, I mean, she was in tears. And she fell down in front of us. Fill up more, 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 more. The Holy Spirit's over you. Just open your mouth. 
Da 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 kaska salada da da kaska salada da 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 kaska salada salada da da kaska salada Holy Spirit, more, 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 fill up. Ah, uh, you just got baptized, filled with the Spirit. He's there. He's there. This is a new beginning. It's a new beginning for you. It's a new beginning. It's a new beginning. Oh, God, we thank you for freedom, God. We thank you for a new beginning. And her family that was with her, her uh, sister-in-law and, and their kids, just totally at peace, like everything's normal and people walking by like, what's going on there? And I just remember in my mind just going, this is so cool what's happening to this this girl right now. This is so amazing, God. And, um, and she had no idea what was... And she had no idea what was happening. just a regular day, yeah. And, and she got back up and she was just like, you could tell she was a different person. God had just changed her from the inside out of the maid. <laughs> It's okay, Lily. I'm okay. Uh, this is good. Way more than okay. <laughs> Way better than just okay. God, He wants to be alive. He wants to show us and show who He is to us. And, and see, this is God. This is outside here. Not on a fine, in a fine church. But, but God is there and He wants to be part of our life. He wants to be part of your life. And then we moved on from there. Um, then we prayed for a guy named uh, oh. Danny. Right, yeah. First we asked for an, another guy if he had any pain, and he said no, and then Danny came. That's right. There was a gentleman sitting on said, the bench, and we asked if we could pray if he had any pain, and he said, no, 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 I'm okay. And a, and a guy named Danny, about to use a payphone, said, oh, my back really hurts. <laughs> oh, okay, how long has it hurt for? Oh, like uh, a long time. Ten I think years. it was 10 years. Yeah. Okay. And uh, or that's what it was. It was five years, this man's back hurt. And um, so we said, okay, cool, well, uh, let's, let's sit you down. And we sat him down and his um, one leg was longer than the other by probably close to half an inch. Leg grow, loosen and grow right now in the name of Jesus. There it is. Yeah, whoa, that is smooth. You feel that? You feel that? <laughs> and and it move in your I hands. Felt the, I felt the pop. Something possible to know. Can, can, now you can, st Danny, try to stand up and feel your back now. That's pretty good. Yeah. Is it gone? Yeah. 15 years yeah. and it's gone. Yeah, well, five. five. Oh, five years and it's gone now. Yeah. Uh, 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 what did you experience? I don't know. That was good. <laughs> but this is this is first time he do this. That was awesome. And then as we were looking for more people, we decided to go get some ice cream. <laughs> and um, we went in to get some ice cream. You talked to the lady behind the counter? Uh, yeah, there was a woman behind the counter and she asked what we were doing here, where we were from. And so we explained to her. Uh, oh, we, we're going around and we're, we're praying. I'm actually from Houston and we're with people from all over the place and we're praying for people who have any kind of sickness or pain. Um, and she said, oh, really? So I told her about Danny and she said, oh, my gosh, uh, I want to meet whoever this guy is. And I thought she meant Danny, the guy who got <laughs> healed. And I'm like, oh, I don't I don't know where he is. I'm sorry. She said, well, you what, whenever this guy comes back to pray, uh, you let me know. And in my mind, I thought, well, that was me right here. <laughs> I'm that <laughs> so, person. So yeah, I'll, I'll come back right? just a minute here. And, uh, and then she came around the counter and then she took off her shoe. She said, yeah, it's this ankle right here. And then she opened up and she just, she kept letting me pray for her ankle. It got better, it got better, it got better. Before I know it, I turn around and there's like four or five people that are going, oh, I have pain, oh, I have pain. Uh, can, can you pray for me? Can you pray for me? How is it? What are you doing? What are you doing? It wasn't me, man. Yeah. <laughs> I was in pain. I'm not, I'm not lying, I don't know. Yeah. Is it gone completely? Yeah. Come on, jump, jump. Yeah. Come on. I, can't, I, can't, I can't do it now. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Jesus. It's Jesus. Yeah. Go down, go down, go down, go down, go down, go <laughs> down. Uh, when have you kunned that last time? In the, in the military. Ten years ago? Yeah, ten years. So you are not be able to go down ten years? No, no, every time I can't. Do, Come on. I have to do that. Oh, I know. It feels good. Okay, now sit in the chair. See if you can do it as, as quick as you used to. And then stand up. It is good. It is good. Ten years, you'll not be able to do that. No, I haven't. I'm telling you. I've been in pain. Yeah. Always going to the doctors in and out. But Jesus is the great doctor. Yeah, he is. He's the highest. And he's there. Yeah. Amen. What is wrong with you? My arm. But, but look, look here. You cannot lift a hand there. How long time have you had that? Like uh, six, six weeks. weeks. So in six weeks, you'll not be able to do like this. You'll be losing right now in the name of Jesus, right now. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. You got it. It's yours. Keep it. So before before you could get to here. Yeah, yeah with her, right? Uh huh. It's yours, my friend. It's better, yeah. You pass on. Back to you. It's good. Well, yeah. Hold me the hand, Adriel. Give me five. Yeah. Huh? Uh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> good? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> now we know what it's like. Yeah. So we get to go back to uh, Houston and um, I get to go find uh, parks and <laughs> stores and you know, wherever we're, if we're sitting there and we're eating pizza somewhere, I know that's not off yeah. limits for God, it's so yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah, it's like a, a redhead growing up in Asia and feeling like this is all, I just, I feel like there's gotta be more to life. <laughs> Everybody's the same and then going yeah. to Ireland and going, that is, it really is, there's people like me. Like, that's why I feel like, like that's, oh, this is life. Okay, yeah. good, that's what I wanted and now I can go and do that. I can do this for life. Yeah, so we're, we're really <laughs> excited to go back and I just feel like, Man, my neighbors, the, the people in town that don't even know me yet, they have no idea what's about to hit them. Or where because I'm like, oh, I get it now, God, I can do this. I can absolutely do this. We're living in really exciting times in, in Europe. We're beginning to see a reenactment of the Book of Acts in our times. We're seeing it people going out with the gospel, with the demonstration of the kingdom. There's often a very clear gospel message about turning away from one's sins. And part of the package is actually baptism and being filled with the Holy Spirit. So often in our church systems, they are separated. But what we're seeing more and more, it's coming together into one stream like it was in the book of Acts. So there's no waiting. So when somebody repents and express faith in Jesus, they are taken wherever there's water. And it's, it can be anywhere. It can be a lake, it can be in a, a rainwater tub, it can be in a, in a bath or whatever. People are baptized immediately and at the same time also filled with the Holy Spirit. The first words that came out of Jesus' mouth was, Repent, the kingdom of God is near. And we are called to preach repentance today. And it's like that part has been lost in the church today. We are talking about faith, but not talking about repentance. They're almost afraid talking about sin. But we are called to talk about sin. We are called to preach repentance. We have to say what sin is. We have to say that those people who continue in sin is going to die. We have to talk about sin before we talk about that Jesus was the Lamb of God who came to remove our sin. Because if we don't talk about sin, what should people then do with Jesus? Where are you going? Go with God to heaven. Who, why? Because... <laughs> uh, yeah. Are you a good person? Yeah. Okay. Have you ever lied? Yeah. Have you ever stolen anything? Mm. Download no, something from the oh, internet yeah. without paying? Okay. Have you had sex out of marriage? This is three of the Ten Commandments. How, 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 many, how many shall I go through? Yeah. <laughs> it, it's all about how we compare ourselves to each other. Of course, if you compare yourself to people around you, you can think you're a good person. The question is not if you think you're a good person. The question is, are you good enough? And the Bible says, have you just done one of the sins? You are guilty in them all. And it's not like in other things, like it's okay if you wait and you have the bad deeds and good things. It's not like that. It's like guilty or not guilty. Have you one time broken the law? You are guilty in broken the law. And, and if you talk about God, no person ever can come to God, come to heaven by our good deeds. It is not possible. And I've always thought I was a good person because 
Yes, I've been fighting a little too much. I've been drinking too much. I've been doing things, but, 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 but this person and this person and this person and this person is, is much worse than me. So my problem was I compare myself to people around me instead of comparing myself to the one I'm going to stand in front of one day. I believe what we have to do is to get back to what the Bible shows us. Repentance isn't so much feeling sorry about our sins and, and what we've, we've done and how we've, you know, we've, we've violated God's word in the sense of ourselves. Being sorry is not true repentance. It's part of it, but it's not the full story. We see Pharaoh in the Old Testament with the Egyptians, uh, with the Israelites in Egypt. He was sorry. He proclaimed. He said, oh, I have sinned against God. So he confessed his sin, but he did not turn away from his sin. Neither is it just remorse. A lot of people say that you see, oh yeah, they're really sorry. They're crying because they have true remorse. Judas in, in the New Testament, he had remorse. He was so remorseful that he actually committed suicide, but he did not turn away from his sin. When we read the Bible, we can see that God brackets repentance with forgiveness rather than forgiveness with faith in Jesus. And, and I think looking at it in the latter part, we, we often think that faith in Jesus, God automatically forgives us our sins. And as you read the Bible, you discover that's not the case. Okay, let's imagine you and me play chess together. I move, and then it's your turn. I want to see you move. <laughs> My turn, your turn. Okay. Am I now allowed to do this, move one there and move one there? Am I allowed to move two times? No. Why? Because there's rules. And the rules is, you move one time, I move one time. When it comes to God, you have sinned. You have done something that's wrong. And because of that, you are divided from God. And you cannot have fellowship with God because of our sin. Our sin due that God cannot have fellowship with us. God is looking at you and say, I don't want to punish you, but I'm holy. So I need to do it. But I want to, at the same time, give you a chance to get forgiveness and get relationship with me. So I send my son Jesus to die for you. So it's like this, you have sinned and broke the commandment of God. And because of that, we are living without fellowship with God. We are living our own life divided from God. God looked down on you and said, okay, I don't want to judge you. I want to forgive you. So I send my son Jesus to die for you. Whose turn is it now? Your turn. God, He wants to forgive. He wants to set you free. He wants to give you a new life. He wants to heal through you. He wants to do those things. But He said, oh, it's your turn, it's your turn, it's your turn. He are waiting for you to do it. But as soon as you said, it's your turn, I repent and receive that forgiveness. As soon as you do this, God is like, I'm going to forgive you. And so important to understand that because there's so many people, I had that at one time. Like you, I believe there was some, I believe there was God. But in my mind, in my universe, okay, when time is, he's going to come to me. When it's up to him, he's great, he's big, he can do it when he wants to. And I took the responsibility away from me over to him. A true deep repentance requires action. It's not just a word. It's not just something that we think. True repentance is not only realizing that you have sinned against a holy God, but that you then confess your sins to him, you have, you're remorseful to him, and you turn away from that sinful life and you start living his life. The word for repent in the Bible is the word metanoia, which means to uh, again think. And God wants us to think again about our lives and, and how we've lived. And if, if we will have a rethink about God and how our sins affect him, then God will also have a rethink about what he thinks about us. And if you confess your sin and get it out in the light, you experience forgiveness. But if you keep it close, every time you take a step toward the light, Satan is going to say, but remember, but remember, but remember, yeah. But now it's out. You have confessed it. You have said it to me. You have said it. 
and, and, and be led by the Holy Spirit, maybe you should say it to the whole world. I don't know what, but there is forgiveness. People need to hear this. There's freedom. There's so many girls going through with so many women. And when they have done exactly the same, carry it around 30, 40, 50 years. And, 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 and this is not where freedom is. Freedom is what you are experiencing right now. I came today and um, seeking God for the um, gift of tongues and for anything else in my life that I may need deliverance from. And over this weekend, God has delivered me and blessed me with the gift of tongues and washed me with the water baptism. I've been living for over 30 years with shame and embarrassment as a secret that when I was in my 20s, I had an abortion. And each and every day from that day forward, the devil has had his way with me. So I've been seeking God too, as I was watching Torben's videos. <laughs> Telling God I can't do it anymore. Pleading, asking, wanting to know. He had forgiveness for me. And then it came that he led me to come here this week. And I feel led to speak with Torben that God had something to say through him to me. So I was given the opportunity by God to be freed, delivered from this pain. Over 30 years, I am free. Thank you, Jesus. In my 20s, God help me, yes, I had an abortion, and ever since that day, God has been the devil. God has tried to tell me it's okay, but the devil just had that greater hold on my life. He just had hanging on and hanging in. I remember the day it happened like yesterday and I feel the pain the same. It's a new beginning, yeah. it's a new start. Are you ready to get baptized with Jesus yes. Christ? To wash away your sins? Yes. So on your own faith, yes. we baptize you to Jesus Christ. Die. Yes. Die with Christ. Oh, with Christ. Yeah! <laughs> That's friendly. God, we thank you for Elizabeth. God, we thank you for your freedom. And when she confessed that, another woman came up and confessed the same sin. And suddenly, her testimony already brought life and forgiveness to another. And that woman there got baptized in water. And she experienced that freedom. Later, we were at a meeting with 80 people where she explained how she had done that and it was sin with the abortion. But Jesus had forgiven her her sins. And when she confessed that and shared that testimony at a meeting with 80 people, out of that meeting there came 12 women to her afterward confessing the same. And here we see the power in confessing sins, the power in baptism in water, and what the gospel is all about. Him who believes and is baptized shall be saved, Jesus said.
What's really interesting about water baptism is that uh, I believe that through time and tradition, today we, we look at a sacrament very different than what the Bible shows us is really a sacrament. Uh, often we look at a sacrament as an outward sign of an inward reality. And what's interesting about that definition is it takes the spiritual and the physical and it completely separates these two things. And as a result, we only see baptism as something that's just ceremonial and has no connection with anything in the spirit realm. In other words, it's just like a confirmation of something that's already taken place in the spirit. But baptism is very, very different than that. Uh, what we've discovered is that baptism is, is, is not something that's just sacramental as far as being an outward sign of an inward reality. We're seeing that when you go into that water, the Spirit of God is touching that. And when the physical and spiritual connect in water baptism, God does something miraculous. What's interesting is that water baptism is two things. It's both a bath and a burial. And to have a bath, you have to be dirty. So what does that mean? It means that a person who's getting baptized needs to acknowledge their sins before God. And in, in that sense, baptism and repentance go hand in hand. And it, it's turning and, and, and coming in faith. And the requirement for baptism, it, what God wants us to bring, is repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. A person comes dead in their sins. And what happens is we take that person who's coming in their sins, bringing proof of repentance, and then we baptize them. So when that person comes out, they are brand new and they're clean. And uh, I tell many people that we meet, water baptism isn't just a clean start in life. It is a brand new, clean life to start. <laughs> Let it out, let it out. More, 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 Glory. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Up here, like a feeling my heart. Welling up, huh? It's, it's, it's the living water that's welling up inside of you, and God is releasing that through your mouth. I smile now, and I was like, Jesus. Claudio, you're a brand new man. Amen. Amen. You feel good? Yeah. This is just the beginning, Claudio. This is just the beginning. God's given you this gift now. There's going to be times where you may not know what to pray for. Mm -hmm. And now you can go in faith and pray. And pray, okay. And you know what's great about praying in tongues? I often find that I can concentrate on other things while I'm praying because my mind is not praying. I'm just letting my mouth move by faith. Okay. And the Spirit intercedes through us. Amen. So God just used you. The Spirit just came in and Amen. intercedes through you. Amen. It's beautiful. Amen. Thanks, God. Isn't God good? Yes, yes. He's great. He's great. Yes. I've learned something today. The power of water baptism unto Jesus. It's no, it's not no longer like a symbol, like most, you know, most churches might believe, like I used to believe. Because that's all I knew. I just thought it was like just 
something you go through, you know, or the sprinkle or whatever. But there's so much power when you truly believe what it's all about, about the death, the, the burial, the closure. The old man, the nature is gone and a, and a new man comes up. As I've learned today, you know, do you uh, believe in Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Yes, I do. Well, old man goes under, you die, and a new man arise. And as soon as he came up out of the water, he said something left him, a great weight left him, and no longer had any hold of his life. And immediately he received the baptism of, his Holy, of the Holy Spirit. And this brother was so broken, he was sobbing, and he was just holding his chest. I mean, it was just so precious to see. It was so precious to see what God was doing in his life. And all he can do was just weep in the presence of God. And for me, just to see what God, how, and he, like I said, he drove, I guess, three, four hours or whatever it was to get here because this is what he wanted. And that thing that was attacking him all this time no longer has power over him. And he's free. He is totally free. And I am truly thankful. So now I have learned that there is something to what a baptism. There is something to repentance the Father. There is something to having the baptism of the Holy Spirit. All three of these things are made in. And that has truly changed my life. And I will preach that message until the day I die because I've experienced it and it was one of the most powerful demonstrations of God, demonstration of God's love that I have ever seen. The reason why I believe we're seeing this happen now is because when that old man dies, Demons lose their, their grip and their grab. They, they, can't, they can no longer torment a dead man because the old man dies. And when you come out of that water, you're somebody brand new. There's a new man <laughs> wearing your old clothes. When Jesus was walking here on earth, he was preaching repentance. And then he was teaching that people need to be born again out of water and spirit. But he could not at that time baptize people in his name. And he could not baptize people with the Holy Spirit. But after the cross, when Peter stood up on Pentecost, we hear the full gospel for the first time. When Peter said, repent, get baptized for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the Holy Spirit. Okay, so you kneel down and you say, I baptize you to Jesus Christ and make sure he come down. <laughs> Die with Christ. Oh, with Christ. Freedom, 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 freedom. Go, 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 freedom, freedom, freedom. Come, me, go, go, go. I command this man, go. Right now, right now, come on, come on. Go in the name of Jesus, I command this man, go. Right now, leave him, right now. Out, 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 go! Name of Jesus, I command every demon, go right now. Name of Jesus, I command this man, go! Right now, come on! Right, come on! Come on! Right now, I command this man, go! Come! Go, right now, demon, go! I command every demon, leave him right now! Lie, go! Come on, more, 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 let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. I command you, demon, right now, in the name of Jesus, come on! Come! More, go! 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 In the name of Jesus, I command last. Go! Go in the name of Jesus, I command it. Leave him. Come out! Right now. Leave him. Leave him. Fill him up. Fill him up. Fill him up more. Freedom. 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 This is real. Thank you. <laughs>
Oh, this is real. If you want to read a book about this, I want to recommend a book. Maybe you have heard about the book. The name of the book is the Bible. This is what we read in the Bible. He got set free and then the Holy Spirit took over. It's not just a picture, it's real. And with this, if this is real in the Bible, what about the rest? Every word is real. From the beginning to the end. Hallelujah. <laughs> My friend. I sing, remember clenching my fists and I remember banging on the water and then I remember yelling out loud and then uh, there was a commotion, there was something happening. <laughs> I didn't know it was me, I didn't know what was happening. Um, and I, I, I had my eyes closed and then I opened my eyes and I was in a different position to where I was before. I, I was looking and, and Tobin was over there and I was facing this way and before I was facing another way I didn't quite understand why and then there was some more commotions and I I, I had this uh, I think the last thing I remember was Torben saying demons get out and it was peaceful then it, it just calmed down and um, there was uh, quiet and silence and after uh, I, I can remember looking up and there was loads of people there with all their cameras out and there was a lot of people looking at me and it was like I was in a, a bit of a shock a bit coming out of a, like it's coming out of surgery it's like and everyone's there um, in terms of how I can explain it um, through my life and my experiences there's not really anything that's close to this but the best thing I have from my experience is it's like having a tough taken out um, I knew there was something in there when this commotion was going on that I had no right to be there and it's like now that that tough has come out and there's nothing there, it's something's come out, gone and there's like new, new skin there and when you've had your tough taken out you want to get your tongue and you want to touch it, touch the, you just creep your tongue over to the, where the tough's come out, feel what's like and it was like that, there was something new and and young there where this tough had been and um, I'm happy I'm free and it, it's all thanks to Jesus Christ. As soon as people get baptized I start to pray for them for deliverance because now they die with Christ they rise up with Christ so now Satan has to leave them and it's really strong to see deliverance out there as part of baptism and it was so powerful so many people came and saw it and suddenly there was a multitude of 150, 200 people who were standing looking. And right after he got set free and he got baptized with the Holy Spirit and spoken tongues that were really powerful, then we were supposed to baptize the rest of his family, his son and his daughter and his wife. When they came down in the water ready to get baptized, God did something amazing. We're reading the Gospels today and, we were, and we're reading when Jesus got baptised in the River Jordan and um, we were reading the bit when um, the heavens opened and the Holy Spirit came down like a dove and um, me and Laura and I was, we, were, we were just saying, oh, shall we pray that something like that happens today, that we see a sign in the sky when we get baptised and um, so when, it actually, when we got baptised, I was, I was in the water waiting to get baptised and I heard people in the crowd say, look up! And uh, I turned and I, I looked up and uh, I saw real written in the sky. And uh, it's like, my prayer had been answered as I was about to get baptised. So, thank you, Jesus. Everybody pointed and said, look, look up! And up in the sky, there had just been an airplane riding on the sky, real. And it was in the same time that I was praying for the hospital and he got delivered. And I had been saying, this is real. This is not a picture. If this is real, everything we read in the Bible is real. And suddenly we saw it on the sky. 
that God has written. Read. Yeah, I have seed, I have seed. Yeah, I have seed. We start to preach the gospel afterwards, and many more people repented and got saved that day. And instead of just baptizing eight people as we was supposed to, we baptized more than 30 people. Because people who saw what happened, saw how people got delivered from demons, saw how they received the Holy Spirit, they also repented from their sins and came and got baptized and experienced the same. The demonic world is so real. It's very real. I'd seen it, I'd seen glimpses of it in churches when evangelists had come or the so-called men of God had come. People who walk in authority, they pray for people and see them manifest. But I'd never seen it happen um, from my own hand. The first real experience I had, um, and probably the biggest experience I've had, is when my wife and I baptized someone for the first time in our home. And this person, she was involved in, in a lot of New Age, Reiki healing, um, tarot card reading, crystals. A lot of things new aged and we we baptized her and if we had just left it at that like a normal church service we would have smiled given her a certificate and had a cup of coffee afterwards but we continued to pray for her and pray for her and after about two minutes the demons started to manifest and one after one they manifest and we cast them out and it was the most real, the most radical experience that I've ever had. It opened my eyes up to the battle. This is a fight. We are not just asked. We are not told it's a good idea, but we're commanded by Jesus to cast out demons. We're given the responsibility to set people free in Jesus' name. Why is that fight going on? Because Satan don't like it. But now we are going on the water and then she's going to come up and you're going to see a freedom. You're going to see a freedom and a new life. Look at it, just kneel down. Don't be afraid, lean down. Just kneel down. There's freedom. No, you can. You can. You can. You can. You can. In the name of Jesus, you can. You can. It's a new life. But Satan is a liar. Satan is a liar. He has been lying. He has been lying. And he don't want you to give everything over to Jesus Christ. Because when you give you over, he's going to set you free. And Satan is going to lose and he don't want this. It's free. It's in you. It's coming up. You can. My knees don't want to bend. No. Go down in the name of Jesus. And she wants to. She can, her knees don't want to bend. She cannot get out. There is a fight going on. But in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. Just go down. In the name of Jesus, just go down. Down, down. Just go down in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, go down. Go down, go down, go down. In the name of Jesus, go down. Are you ready? Are you ready to get baptized to Jesus Christ? So on your own faith, we baptize you to Jesus Christ. Just go down. Die with Christ, up with Christ. Freedom, freedom, freedom. Say it, go. Leave her, leave her, leave her right now. Come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. Leave him, go, go, go. Come out, come out, go, 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 right now, go right now. Shut that loose, 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 loose. Go, go. In the name of Jesus, I command this religious spirit go right now in the name of Jesus. Go. 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 I command it, leave it, leave it! 
Do you experience the freedom? You're free. Amen. Yeah! Come on! Yeah! Come on, stand up. How is it? Great! Thank you! Thank you! Feel it? Feel it? Feel it? Feel it right now. Holy Spirit, come on. Come on, a new life! Come on, I can see it! I love it! Yes! Repent from your sins toward Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's a battle, but Satan has lost. Jesus is alive. A new life, 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 a new life. A new life. A new life. Thank you that you're feeling well. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Oh, you Speaking talks before now. Ah, powerful! Ah. We have seen so many people got delivered from sin in baptism. We have seen schizophrenic people get delivered from demons in baptism. We have seen people with eating disorder get delivered in baptism. We have seen sick people get healed in baptism. We have seen many people who was not able before to receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit. But when they got baptized in water, the Holy Spirit came over them and they started to speak in tongues. It is real. I tell you it's real. I don't know how to explain it, but the Spirit of God came and I was really baptized in the Spirit. I really spoke in tongues. I'm going to pray and you're going to help me. Yes. What is your name? Kathy. Kathy. Kathy, she have had anxiety and she also wants to get baptized with the Holy Spirit. And just wow. met her two minutes ago and I talk about baptism with the Holy Spirit and how it is. God. God. I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe in you, Jesus. I believe in you, Jesus. I repent. I repent. And I ask you. And I ask you. Set me free. Set me free. From every anxiety. From every anxiety. And come with your Holy Spirit. And come with your Holy Spirit. Fill me up. Fill me up. Baptize me. Baptize me. Right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The Bible makes it clear that there is always a sign when people receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit. 
In Book of Acts chapter 8, we can read about Philip, how he came to Samaria, and he preached the gospel, and people received the message, and they repented, and they got baptized in water to Jesus Christ. But at that time, they have not yet received the baptism with the Holy Spirit. So when the apostle came, they saw that they have not received the baptism with the Holy Spirit. So they lay their hands on them and they received the baptism with the Holy Spirit. You don't read right there what happened, but you know there was a sign. Why? Because there was a guy called Simon. Simon, he saw how the Holy Spirit was given by the hands of the apostles. And when he saw that, he wanted the same power that those people he also laid their hands on was going to receive the Holy Spirit. And now we start to speak in tongues, but I said, now just say the first verse and let it out. Holy Spirit freedom. But that I guess gets a freedom right now. That I guess gets a lady. Freedom right now. Freedom, 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 Holy Spirit, freedom. Don't go to the yeah, it's cool, isn't it? I had mine done yesterday. He got baptized. With I got baptized yesterday. yesterday. yesterday and you got baptized with the today. And you know what we're gonna do? Go out and come. Yeah. You have to how, go out. How, how did it just came? Yeah. How, how yeah. was that? That was awesome. That's crazy amazing. Awesome. Crazy amazing. Try to imagine that here in the middle of the street. I know. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> you go and tell others now about this. Okay. That's what you need to do. Yeah. I've always felt that if there are always two camps, if you go to one camp, they only talk about miracles, miracles, miracles. And that didn't seem to make a lot of sense to me for the simple reason that I said, if, you, if Jesus only wanted to help us with miracles and healing my physical body, and that's all he wanted to do, then it kind of contradicts this whole aspect of God promising to give us believers a new body one day. But at the same time, if I go to the other side of the camp and I say, oh, then miracles are not for today, it's only the word of God, word of God, then it contradicts the scripture because the scripture says, the word will come together with power and he'll confirm it with power. So where is that really middle road? And the middle road is found in the, real, in the Word of God where there is a balance of both, where we want the Word of God to be, to come together with the power of God and actually do a transformation in people's lives where people will truly be under the conviction of the Holy Spirit, experience a new life, repent, turn from sin, not just confess sin, but forsake sin, receive the power of God, be baptized in water, speak in tongues, and operate on a day-to-day -day basis with the power of God in you, uh, or rather in the temple, which is us. For years, I just goofed around with, with religion, and then I moved away from it completely, and then I, there was this hunger to come back to it. And as I came back, I realized there are areas in my life that I, had, I was shut down in unbelief. Oh, that doesn't happen for today. That's not, that's only Jesus' time. Or oh, that's only meant for few people. And then I read the Bible, it says, these signs will follow those who believe. And I'm saying, I am a believer. Where is it not happening? And what we need is to stir one another's faith. If I have a team of people and all doing the same thing, I get encouraged in my faith. And the same thing with you now. Today you have a gift of a language. If you don't use that gift, that's what's going to happen. It's going to fall away. This is what's going to happen if you have this in you now and you say, I'm going to read the Bible, ah, I'm going to bother. You'll, you'll throw it all away. Cultivate it, make it your lifestyle. Make God the center of your life and do what we are doing to your friends. Think of anyone you know in your life, any one of your friends, call them over and tell them what happened today. Share your testimony and then you pray for them. Believe that when you put your ha hand on people, pray. And you know, I'm talking with such confidence. Guess how long I've been doing this? Such as today. Today. Oh. Today is my first day I'm healing people. I'm praying for healing today. Now just imagine all that church junk we learned and I could never do anything. And now with the power of God in us, you can do it right now and actually look for somebody on the road and pray for them and you'll have a healing. That's the power of Jesus Christ. He's amazing. Come on, all come together. Watch what's happening. You're going to see what God's going to do today. Okay. Isn't that awesome? 
Who's who wants to come first? Who's got a problem? No, you? no, I'm fine. No, no really. no, you're, you've got it right now. Come, you got on, come on, you got blisters. Okay, got you got you got pain in that ankle? Uh, uh, no, on my foot. Like I've on just your got foot? blisters everywhere. I don't okay. Think that really matters. Though. Be healed in Jesus' name. How do you feel? Move your leg. Oh my God. No, I don't feel anything. Really? Yeah, I don't feel anything. On a scale of one to ten, do you feel any pain? Only two. Probably. Okay, let's pray again. Bones come into alignment. Be healed. In Jesus' name. Oh, oh my God, that's crazy. It is. Isn't Jesus awesome? He's amazing, isn't he? <laughs> Absolutely. No, thank you so much. Are you sure? You're not yeah. just saying this to please no, me. No, no, act, act, no, being legit. I can actually walk. Fantastic. Walk and show me. Come on, walk. No pain at all? No pain at all. Fabulous. Pain. Praise Jesus. Praise, praise Jesus. him. Praise him. Who's the next? Um, Come on. I have um, joint pains in my knee. Right. Yeah. Okay. How long have you had it for? Um, started like towards the end of last, like middle of last year, and it just comes and goes. And what would you say is the pain level right now? Can you feel any um, pain? When I put pressure on it, it feels like something's like just point. Like okay. It. Let's pray. Knees, joints, be healed in Jesus' name. Move it now and see how you feel. Just move it around. That, that's a bit funny. Like, feels funny. If it, like, it, it was there two seconds ago. Is it and gone? Now it doesn't hurt. At all? Completely? At all. Like, I'm putting pressure on it. Like, if I put pressure on it normally, I have to, like, that's a bit. Whoa. Is it completely gone? Yeah. Praise God for that. You know, this healing happened how? By the power of Jesus. That's what it is. It's Jesus that does it, not me. I'm not any special person. I'm just a messenger. Anyone else has got anything? Come on. Um, I recently recovered from a sprained ankle and still get pain every now and again. Do you have it right now? A little bit. Move it around and see whether what kind of pain you have. Yeah, I've got pain. Okay. Ankles, be healed in the name of Jesus. Move your ankle. Oh, that feels weird. <laughs> Come on, walk a little bit. What the? <laughs> Isn't he amazing? I mean, I'm as amazed as you are because you know what? I'm a new Christian. I've just been baptized in, in water. I've just received uh, the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I spoke in a foreign language, just like the Bible says. And then the Bible says, go out and heal people. Don't listen to the religious denominations of Christianity. That's all rubbish. And that's all religion. True followers of Christ do what Jesus tells us to do. And that's what we're doing. We're just simple, ordinary people, just going out and, and listening to what Jesus said. How much do you know about Holy Spirit and baptism with the Holy Spirit? Sense for me. Yeah. What about speaking tongues? Have you heard about that? I have, but I, I wasn't I have seen it when I was younger, but I got really scared. Okay. So I wasn't sure what it was with very little understanding yeah. about yeah. the Bible yeah. and how the Holy Spirit works. Okay. It was kinda hard for me to understand, yeah. but the church that I go to, I I I didn't see that happening oh. yet. In Book of Acts chapter 19, you read about Paul, how he came to Ephesus where he met some believers. He did not ask them which church they attend, because this is not important. He asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And those believers had not yet got baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ and they had not yet received the Holy Spirit. So Paul there baptized them to Jesus Christ and when he then laid a hand on them, they all received the Holy Spirit and start speaking in tongues. Freedom, freedom, more, more freedom, freedom. Right now, God, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your freedom, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are filling her up. You are filling her up. Never the same. 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 Oh, 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 Here. You felt that call. <sighs> you never experienced that call. I will never be the same. And there in that mall, I laid the hands on her, and the Holy Spirit came over her as she had never experienced before. 
and she was so touched by the Holy Spirit. So we decided to go outside to talk and pray a little more. And outside when I prayed for her, a demon started to manifest. I command this to go right now. I command this leave her right now. There's freedom. There's freedom. There's freedom. There's freedom. There's freedom. Come. Go. Freedom right now. Freedom right. Now. Go. Go. I command this go. 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 Right now. Go. Go. Leave her. Leave her. Leave her. Leave her right now. Leave her. And in the beginning, I did not know exactly what it was I was praying for. But then God revealed it to me. He showed me a sin in her life she had done. And when I told her, she broke down crying and said, How did you know? How did you know this? Can God forgive me? And there, outside that mall, that young girl met God. And he was so strong, so at one point there came three guards running out. And she said, go away, go away, I want to talk with them, I want to talk with them. And that day, that girl met God. Later in the afternoon, she came and we prayed for her and she got baptized with the Holy Spirit and she spoke in tongues. It was very emotional and when he was praying for me, I have never mentioned it to him before, but he did tell me that uh, I reminded of someone from, from some, the same girl that was going through the same thing. And that's when I knew that God wanted to tell me that day that he's forgiven me. Even though I've never, I didn't want to forgive myself because I thought there was no forgiveness for such thing. But that day, God used Turban to, to let me know that He loves me and He forgave me from what I've done. And He's allowed me to experience that and it's, I will never forget it and I will never be the same again. Can you say about the feeling yesterday and then what happened today? Yeah. Sorry, I'm just really happy. I thought about it yesterday. Like, it really is his way of telling me. Because I, I, I was tired of looking for answers. And I could not find it anywhere. There's always something inside me. And then I, yesterday it was, it was finalized for me. And I'm just really happy for it. Um, so today I got baptized. And um, it, I felt really great after, and it, it's it's something that I have been thinking of doing before. But it's just I thought there are things I have to do first before I can do it. I have to to talk to a pastor, have a couple of seminars or something like that. On your own faith, we baptize you to Jesus Christ. Die with Christ, bow with Christ. Oh, God, we thank you for Maria. God, we thank you for everything you have done, God. Thank you for what you did yesterday. Thank you for what you're doing today. And thank you for what you're going to do in the future, God. It's so amazing how God really answers prayers and how He can give you in this perfect time the things that you need to learn and the things that you need to know about His love. And as I was actually praying the night before I met Turban, I was praying that night on the highway while I was driving. I was praying that I would be more, I would have this desire in my heart to, to know Him and to, to reach out and just, just give everything to Him. But I don't know where to start. I felt like I've I've ran away so far that it's just um he's not there anymore. But yesterday he he answered my prayer and he made me realize that he was there the entire time. He's he's right there when I was grieving, when I was depressed, depression was depression got me big, but I, I 
I, I, I'm still here and I'm a representation of his love. I really think that when the church comes back to a true baptism, the true gospel, repent, turn to Christ, be baptized for the remission of your sins, die with Christ and rise with Christ and be filled with the Holy Spirit that will change this world. What we see in the book of Acts is an organic, dynamic life with God that is not based on hierarchy, it's not based on programs or projects, it's people who are following Jesus. As we're living the book of Acts, we're now seeing how that plays out in life. And now when we look into that perfect mirror of God's Word, where it says the Word became flesh, it's happening in our own lives. So it's like we're now looking at ourselves when we read scripture. I see people who are fed up with structure. I see people who are fed up with traditions. I see people who will not accept anything but the truth. Almost every Christian in the world wants to see a revival. But my, my picture of revival was like, it's going to come some angels from the heaven or something, or light from heaven, and everyone's going to get started and just wake up and start. And then we have the revival. But I, I'm unsure of it. What we see today is that when, when all Christians around this planet get activated, start doing the things the Bible says, it says we're going to do, go out, heal the sick, preach the gospel, lead people to Christ, then we have the revival. I believe that the revival has been here since Jesus came, actually 2,000 years ago. I truly believe this is the last reformation, the last reformation of the church. This stuff is real. It's real. You can do it. It's just a case of go out there and start working in the street, all right? We can hide a lot of stuff in the church and there's a lot of bondage in the church, but we need to get out there and be doing it on the edge. God is real and, and He called us to be His disciples, He wants to be Jesus' disciples, to go out and show the world that He's real. This is real. <laughs> it is real. I tell you it's real. It's real. It's really real. This is real. If this is real in the Bible, what about the rest? Every word is real from the beginning to the end. This is real. We are living in the last days where God is bringing His church back to the truth, back to the real life we have been longing for. The real life we have been reading in the book of Acts, where the Holy Spirit is leading. This is happening, and it's happening all over the world. So let us keep the focus. Let us continue making disciples, and let Jesus build His church. I believe it's the last Reformation, and this is just the beginning.
Almighty God we serve What a mighty God we serve Angels bow down Heaven and earth adore Him What a mighty God we serve What a mighty God we serve Angels bow down Heaven and earth adore Him What a mighty God we serve What a mighty God we serve Angels bow down What a mighty God we serve Angels bow down